So far, the dominant battery solution for renewables has been lithium ion. But mining pollutes, exploits people, and the batteries have a habit of blowing up. They don't last long enough, and we're going to need a lot more capacity. So what are our options? Enter salt, water, gravity, really hot air, really cold air, and enormous piles of sand. Sounds like a field day at kindergarten, but could these things actually solve our energy storage problem? Before we get into the shiny new stuff, we gotta talk about the lithium ion battery. It's the fastest growing battery segment in the world. Scientists started developing it during the oil crisis of the 1970s. They hoped this could wean the West off fossil fuels. If this sounds vaguely familiar, it's because nothing has changed. But it took a while until you could actually buy one. Engineers Stanley Whittingham, Akira Yoshino, and John B. Goodenough helped develop the first commercially available lithium-ion batteries that came to market in 1991. That's them winning the Nobel Prize for that. We need better batteries, that's for sure. The lithium-ion battery is good at giving a lot of electricity in shorter bursts, so we've depended on it for consumer electronics and now electric cars. And it's pretty much the only battery we use for storing grid-scale renewable energy. But mining lithium is problematic. The extraction process involves pumping underground water deposits to the surface. This uses roughly 70,000 liters to make one ton of lithium. More than half the Earth's resources are between Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile. Mining it consumes 65% of the region's already scarce water supply. Lithium-ion batteries also typically use cobalt, which is expensive. Lithium batteries can also be flammable. If you can't bring them on the plane, you should definitely think twice about a giant one backing up your grid. And they lose capacity, so longevity really isn't their forte. So lithium-ion batteries work, but they can't be the only solution to store energy, especially on a grid scale. According to the IEA, we're going to need close to 10,000 gigawatts of energy storage worldwide by 2040 to meet climate goals. That's 50 times the size of the current market. Today, it's actually another technology, pumped hydro storage, that comprises a whopping 96% of global storage power capacity. And it basically relies on pretty simple gravitational principles. You've got two reservoirs or lakes, one high and one low. And when you have a lot of excess power, you use that excess power to pump the water uphill to the higher reservoir. When you want that power back, you let the water run downstream and turn a turbine generator. However, um, those projects are hard to build. These reservoirs take up massive amounts of space, and you need exactly the right geography, two lakes and a hill. A lot of them also work with conventional hydroelectric dams, which require a lot of upfront capital and disrupt habitat. Storing renewable energy is going to need a lot more flexibility and modularity than these reservoirs. One promising alternative that's making headway comes from something you can find right on your kitchen table. Salt. Sodium is much more abundant, and it's chemically similar to lithium. It's on the same group in the periodic table. This is Rosa Palacin. She's a battery researcher at the Institute of Material Science in Barcelona. She says it's the most straightforward alternative because it basically mimics lithium-ion battery technology. Sodium has also got one valence electron, the number of electrons in the outermost layer. But sodium is a thousand times more abundant, is 20 to 40% cheaper, and isn't sensitive to temperature changes. So no issues with blowing up. But it does have lower energy density, thus heavier batteries, which is why it hasn't commercialized sooner. If it's for the grid though, this won't matter so much since everything is stationary. And right now, time is of the essence. There's also research happening for calcium, magnesium, and zinc batteries, but for these... The technologies are really at the level of, of demonstration in the lab. Speaking of salt, what if we could store energy in the form of heat in really, really, really hot salt? Turns out that molten salt is a great preserver of heat. It looks kind of like water and has roughly the same viscosity. Here's how it works. When there's excess electricity generated, the energy is used to heat a large insulated storage tank of molten salt at very high temperatures. A high melting point means the salt can absorb a lot of energy. It loses little of that heat and can keep it for six plus hours. In comparison, lithium batteries can only manage under four. When the grid needs power, the plant reconverts heat back into electricity through a turbine. One of these plants would provide enough for a large town for at least 10 hours. Malta's first commercial plant won't debut until 2025. While its material costs are relatively low and its system is pretty scalable, its efficiency still lags behind hydro and lithium. The hope is that the market will eventually make it feasible. 
Instead of converting the heat back into electricity, they just use it directly. The storage capacity is in the order of 1,000 times cheaper than, than with lithium batteries. That's Marco Ulonen. He co-founded a company that makes sand batteries. We turn the electricity to heat, but we can make it so cheaply that we can play with the large volumes of energy. How much sand? 100 tons of sand. It can store heat at around 500 to 600 degrees for months. This heat then goes directly to warm municipal buildings. Most importantly, it could provide heat to the heavy industry sector, which is one of the biggest emitters of greenhouse gases. In cold countries, this solution makes a lot of sense. The company currently has one system that's heating Kankampe, a southwestern town with a population of 13,000. The 100-ton sand battery can technically stay hot for months, but they recharge this one in two-week cycles to keep it efficient. The company is also trying to source sand that isn't used in the construction industry, since that's also scarce, and are aiming to make larger batteries. Let's keep in mind that these are just a couple of solutions. There are literally dozens of technologies out there right now, each vying for their place in the market.